The movie is set in an animated fictional reality where food and other household objects are sentient and can move like humans. In this strange world, a supermarket called Shopwells houses several consumables and essential items. All the products in the store are conscious and believe that humans are gods who would deliver them from their aisles to the outside world. They call the area outside the store the Great Beyond and presume it to be a utopian society where every grocery's dreams come true. The products crave to be picked and jump in excitement whenever a human selects them as they believe they'd be delivered to the heavenly beyond. One morning, the store opens as usual. The groceries begin their daily ritual as they sing and celebrate yet another opportunity of being picked. In one of the aisles, a pack of sausages discusses among themselves while they patiently wait. Troy, the longest in the pack, makes fun of Barry, a short but girthy sausage. Frank, who is Barry's friend, consoles the short sausage and commends him for his large girth. Hearing his kind words, Barry instantly cheers up. However, his relief is short-lived as the sausages hear a scream from a distance and collectively tilt their heads to locate the cause. On turning, they spot the store manager approaching their aisle. All the groceries immediately go into a frenzy as the manager checks the shelves for spoiled and contaminated products. A molding jam sights the manager and tries to make a run for it, but the man swiftly grabs and throws it in the trash bin. Shortly after, he arrives at the sausage shelf and stretches his hand towards them as the pack quivers in fear. Luckily, they're eventually spared, and a neighboring pack is instead selected for disposal. After the manager leaves, the groceries collectively heave a sigh of relief. Concerned, Frank checks on his girlfriend, Brenda, a fresh and attractive bun who lives beside the sausages. The grocery couple professes their love for each other and holds hands as they fantasize about uniting in the great beyond. Meanwhile, at the other end of the store, a customer who mistakenly took a jar of mustard home returns the product to its shelf. The mustard jar is traumatized by what it witnessed and shivers as the other groceries inquire about what happened in the great beyond. However, before he can speak, a liquor bottle named Firewater gestures to the mustard to remain quiet. Back at the sausage aisle, a female shopper parks her car at the section. The customer reaches for a pack and to the boy's excitement, they're finally chosen. Once placed in the cart, Frank looks at Brenda and prays that his girlfriend's pack is also selected. Luckily, his prayers are answered as the shopper adds the buns to the cart. As the couple converges and celebrates the reunion, the customer continues shopping and adds the traumatized mustard to her cart. Once added, the jar instantly freaks out and warns the groceries in the cart of the dangers of the great beyond. To his dismay, all except Frank take him for a lunatic and laugh in his face. Frustrated, he stands at the cart's edge and attempts the unthinkable as he jumps down. Seeing this, Frank quickly jumps out of his package and catches the mustard as he asks the jar about the outside world. The traumatized grocery tells the sausage to ask Firewater about the mysterious great beyond. Right then, an approaching shopper accidentally crashes into their cart and sends the groceries flying to the floor. The area immediately turns gory as many of the foodstuffs die while others are left severely injured. Thankfully, Frank and Brenda are left unscathed as they narrowly dodge being crushed by the approaching cart. Meanwhile, the shopper takes Barry, alongside the other sausages and buns, to the checkpoint, after which she leaves with them as Barry laments losing his best friend. Back in the store, a violent douche knocked out of the cart blames Frank and Brenda for the accident and tries to fight the duo. However, before he can attack, the douche gets swept and disposed of by the store manager as the couple swiftly dodges. They are petrified to see the worker and race behind a shelf to avoid being seen. There, the duo meets two other accident survivors, a bagel called Sammy and a lavash named Kareem. A few minutes later, the store closes and the accident survivors unanimously decide to return to their respective aisles before the next day. Together, they climb a nearby shelf and scout the surroundings to locate their bearings, after which they begin the long journey to their aisle. On the way there, the group reaches the liquor section and Frank spots Firewater's shelf. Passionate about discovering the truth of the outside world, Frank goes searching for answers while the rest of the group waits for him outside the liquor section. The curious sausage finds Firewater camping behind a batch of boxes and inquires about the great beyond. Seconds later, Firewater is joined by his colleagues, all of whom are non-perishable items as they reveal the secret of the outside world. The group, who has been at the store since its inception, reveals that humans eat groceries and tells Frank a lengthy story about the past. It turns out that decades ago, all the groceries were aware that humans killed and ate them. Hence, there was a great panic in the supermarket as every product was scared of being picked. In the light of this, the non-perishables decided to intervene and spun a myth about the outside world being a heaven-like place. Over the years, the myth became a well-established fallacy, and now the entire store believes it to be true. Frank is petrified at the discovery and vows to reveal the truth to the entire store. However, he soon realizes that no one would believe him and asks the non-perishables for proof. 
One of them directs him to check the Dark Isle, as that houses the evidence he is searching for. Frank thanks them for their help and quickly heads out to reunite with his group. Meanwhile, Brenda and the other survivors, who have been waiting for over an hour, become worried about Frank. However, before they can search for him, they are approached by Jose, a suspicious tequila bottle who claims to have seen the sausage and promises to take them to him. Worried, they follow the bottle, who leads them to a bar in the Mexican food section. He asks them to wait there and leaves the tavern, promising to return with Frank. As the group settles in, a fresh taco called Teresa approaches and warns them of Jose's ulterior motives. It turns out that the douche escaped from the trash bin and had asked the tequila to help him find the group. Hearing this, they instantly follow Teresa and successfully sneak through the bar's closet before the douche arrives. In the following scene, Barry and the rest of the groceries finally make it to the shopper's home. The food stuff jump in excitement as they celebrate reaching the great beyond. However, their excitement quickly turns to horror as the shopper grabs a potato and skins it alive. The groceries collectively scream in fear as they're slaughtered one after the other. Two carrots try to make a run for it, but the shopper grabs and instantly eats them. Right then, Barry and another sausage named Carl seize the opportunity and sprint to the window. Sadly, Carl is caught and sliced open with a knife before they can escape. Barry takes a second to mourn his friend, but ultimately leaves to avoid being killed. He swiftly sprints to an alleyway and wallows in self-pity. However, he eventually regains hope when he sees a junkie holding a familiar Shopwell's bag. Barry remembers Frank and decides to return to the store to warn him and the other groceries. The girthy sausage chases after the junkie and latches onto his car as he drives off. When the addict gets home, he injects himself with bath salts and immediately hallucinates. Under the influence, he sees Barry and the other items in his house, and for the first time, he is able to hear them speak. Realizing this, Barry begs the junkie to take him to the supermarket, but sadly, the man passes out due to the overwhelming intoxication. While he sleeps, Barry meets the other groceries and befriends them. About an hour later, the addict wakes up, but the effects of the bath salts wear off, leaving him doubtful of his experience. He soon spots the girthy sausage on his couch and takes him to be cooked. Luckily, the hungover junkie misses the pot and drops Barry to the floor. The girthy sausage seizes the opportunity and yanks the addict's shoelaces, thus making him slip and causing an axe to fall and decapitate him. Back at the store, Brenda, alongside the rest of the group, continues their search for Frank. However, they soon get in some trouble when Douche discovers and attacks them. He corners Brenda, but the smart bun spots an injury at the side and rips it open. Douche is momentarily stunned, and the group seizes the opportunity to escape. However, the vengeful object quickly recovers and chases after them. The group frantically speeds off, and all except Brenda easily squeeze through a shelf junction. The bun tries her best to wiggle out, and luckily, with her friend's help, manages to pass the narrow opening. Douche reaches the junction but struggles to go through as the group successfully enacts their escape. They eventually return to the alcohol section and reunite with Frank. On seeing them, the sausage narrates his escapade with the non-perishables and suggests they go to the Dark Isle to search for proof. Brenda immediately rejects the idea and urges Frank to believe in the Great Beyond as they've always done. However, the curious sausage refuses and explains that he can no longer believe in the old myth without proof. The disagreement causes a quarrel between the couple prompting them to split up and head in opposite directions. Frank begins his trip to the Dark Isle while the rest of the group continues the journey to their respective shelves. They eventually reach their destination and dispatch to their individual sections as Brenda joins a pack of buns. Meanwhile, Frank finally reaches the Dark Isle, which turns out to be the cooking section. He trips a knife collection and narrowly escapes being sliced by the falling utensils. The sausage quickly recovers and continues exploring the rest of the aisle. Moments later, he discovers a cookbook and flips through the pages, the curious sausage is instantly horrified by the book's contents as he sees pictures of groceries being chopped and eaten. Determined to save his kind, he tears off a page and swiftly heads to warn the others before the store opens. Minutes later, Frank reaches the store's central control and makes an announcement via the monitor. He reveals the truth to them and shows the cookbook as evidence. His announcement throws the supermarket into a frenzy as the groceries all panic and quiver in fear. However, this doesn't last long as they eventually grow to disbelieve Frank and unanimously decide to return to their blissful ignorance. Right then, the store opens, and customers are let in to start shopping. A concerned Frank runs to the bun section to find Brenda, but is disappointed to discover that a shopper has already picked her. He chases after her but can't keep up as he loses track of the shopping. As Frank loses hope, Barry arrives and reunites with his friend. The girthy sausage tells Frank his experience in the outside world and shows him the decapitated junkie's head as proof. After the reunion, Barry, alongside his newfound friends, enacts their plan to save the other groceries. They boil the junkies' bath salts and use darts to inject them into all the customers at the store. 
The drug causes all the humans to hallucinate as they start seeing and hearing the groceries. The shopkeepers and customers soon turn chaotic as they attack and kill the store items. Frank takes advantage of the ensuing chaos and rescues Brenda. However, a customer corners the couple and tries to step on them. Luckily, Sammy and Kareem intervene just in time as they haul utensils at the man to distract him. While he dodges the attack, they all escape and race away. Moments later, the customer regains his composure and chases after them. But the groceries soon retaliate and launch a series of coordinated attacks. They shoot candy at him and ultimately tie the man to the floor with some stretchy ropes. Working together, a mint candy bar and a fizzing soda cause an explosion in the man's mouth, which bursts open his head, thus killing him. The attack continues for hours until all the humans are restrained and killed, leaving the store manager as the sole survivor. Douche spots the manager and takes control of his body by entering his pants. Getting full command of the manager, Douche goes after Frank. He takes a gun and shoots all the groceries as they all scatter in fear. Moments later, he finds and grabs Frank as he takes a bite out of his torso. Douche ultimately decides to kill the sausage and has the manager point his gun at him. However, before he can pull the trigger, the groceries assemble a propane-powered garbage pail and use it to disarm them. The pail pushes Douche and the manager forward after which they are launched into the sky and explode into fireworks. On seeing this, the groceries enthusiastically celebrate as Frank and Brenda romantically share a kiss. After the ordeal, the group meets with Firewater as the aged liquor reveals yet another secret. He informs the groceries that they do not exist in the real world, as they are merely cartoon characters controlled by a pair of animators. The group is shocked to discover this, and unanimously decides to confront their controllers in the real world. The movie ends as the groceries enter a teleportation machine thus beginning their brand new adventure in the real world. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Don't forget to watch another animation recap video. Thanks for watching.